All right, um, we're going to be looking at using properties of exponents in unit 2b.1. Um, first of all, um, we're going to be looking at an algebraic definition. I'm using generic um, letters like A as our base a lot of times, and then we'll be doing a specific example. Um, let's start with the product of powers. Again, these should be reviewed from Algebra 1. Um, the product of powers states that if you have A to the M times A to the nth power, notice that you're multiplying two powers that have the same base. What we do is we keep the base and then we add the exponents. Okay. A specific example would be if you had something like x to the fifth times x squared. Both of them have the same base. So we would keep the base of x, and since we're multiplying, we would add 5 and 2 to make 7, and then that would be our answer. The quotient of powers, quotient is division, that's when we have a to the mth over a to the nth. When we are dividing powers that have the same base, we keep our base, but then we subtract the exponent, numerator minus denominator. A specific example would be if you had x to the fifth divided by x squared. We are dividing powers with the same base, so we keep our base of x, subtract the exponents, 5 minus 2, we get x cubed. Um, in a power of a power, we would have something like a to the mth, so we would have a power. And then that's being raised to a power. When we have a to the mth to the nth, what we do is, again, we keep the base, but then we would multiply the exponents together. An example is if you would have x to the fifth raised to the second power. In this case, we would keep the base, which is x, and then we would multiply 5 times 2 to get 10. So notice that when you apply the product of powers, the quotient of powers, and the power of a power, in each of these, remember that it's important, well, I mean, in all of these, you're going to make sure that you keep your base the same, all right? Keep the base, just do work on the exponent. The next is when we have the power of a product. It's important that we remember that a product is when we have multiplication. And what that would look like is if we had a times b to the mth power. Notice this is not addition, not subtraction, this is multiplication. So it's the power of a product. When it is multiplication and when it is a product, what you are allowed to do is you are allowed to apply the exponent to each factor on the inside. Again, it's because this is multiplication. We are allowed to apply the exponent to each factor. So we have a to the mth times b to the mth power. Okay. An example of that would be if we had, let's say, 2x to the fifth. When I see 2x, that means 2 times x, so that is a product. That means that I can apply this exponent to each factor. I'd have 2 to the fifth and x to the fifth. And then when you have a number like 2 to the fifth, let's evaluate that. That would be 32 and then x to the fifth just stays x to the fifth at this point. Oops. Okay, right? Next, we have the power of a quotient. A quotient means that you have division. And so if you have division, it might look like this. You might have a over b to the mth power, okay? Because remember, the fraction bar is like division. Again, because you have division, you are allowed to apply the exponent to the numerator and to the denominator. So this would give us the base of a to the mth in the numerator, 
and the base of b to the mth in the denominator. An example would be if you had 2 divided by x to the fifth. Because we have a quotient, we could apply the exponent of 5 to the numerator of 2 and turn that to 2 to the fifth, and then apply the exponent of 5 to the denominator, so that would be x to the fifth. And then, if you have 2 to the fifth, again, the numerical powers you can evaluate. So we end up with 32 over x to the fifth. That would be our final answer. Okay. A negative exponent would be if we have something like a to the negative mth power. And what happens when we have a to the negative mth power, if we have a negative exponent, what happens is that it moves to the denominator and becomes positive. They're really, I mean, everything really can be written as a fraction, but notice that it moves across the fraction bar and becomes positive. Then as a placeholder in the beginning, or sorry, in the numerator, we have a one. I also wanna to demonstrate to you what happens if you have a negative exponent in the denominator. If you have a negative exponent in the denominator, once again, what would happen is that you would move it across the fraction bar and it would become a positive exponent. So the thing to remember with negative exponents is that you basically change sign across the fraction bar. Okay, this is kind of what you remember for the negative exponent. So again, here it's in the numerator, we cross the fraction bar and it becomes positive. Here it was in the denominator, we cross the fraction bar and it became positive. All right, so anytime you have a negative exponent, you put it across the fraction bar and that turns it into a positive. If we have a zero exponent, oh, let me do an example, sorry. <laughs> if we had something like two x to the negative fifth, not both of those things are being raised to the negative fifth, all right? Because notice this is like two times x to the negative fifth. So what happens is that this negative exponent with its base is gonna move across the fraction bar. So the base moves across the fraction bar, and now the exponent is positive. The 2, however, was not being raised to a negative exponent, so that would stay exactly where it was. Remember that there really was a fraction, you know, you can write anything over 1. So this, there was really a fraction bar here. So the x to the negative fifth, the negative changes to a positive when we move it across, the 2 stays put. Now I can talk about the zero exponent. If I have a to the zero power, a to the zero power is one. So that means that anytime you have anything to the zero power, that gives you one, all right, regardless. You might say, why is that? Um, I can't help myself. I'm gonna do a real quick demonstration. Um, if you had something like, um, let's say that we were going this way, that we were looking at two to the first, two to the second, two cubed, two to the fourth, et cetera. These are powers that were pretty, uh, are easily easy to evaluate. So two to the first is two, two squared is four, two cubed is eight, two to the fourth is 16. Let's look at the pattern. The pattern is, is that um, we were increasing the exponent by one each time. And notice that the pattern here is that we would be multiplying by 2. Let's go the reverse way, all right? So that means that let's work down. So if we went 2 to the 4th, 2 to the 3rd, 2 squared, 2 to the 1st, the next thing would be 2 to the 0. The next thing would be 2 to the negative 1. The next thing would be 2 to the negative 2, okay? 
So let's go backwards this way. Notice if we go this way, we divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. Well, if we divide 2 by 2, we get 1. And notice that we said that anything to the 0 power is 1. If we divide 1 by 2 to continue the pattern, we get 1 over 2. That follows the pattern also. Didn't we say that we would move this to the denominator? Let's divide by 2 again. That would give us 1 fourth. And when we think about what we would do to the 2 to the negative 2, that would be 1 over 2 squared, which would give us 1 fourth. I just, it's important for me to kind of describe to you why those properties of exponents exist, okay? Um, and it doesn't just work for 2, that works for any base. And that's why we have these generic bases here to kind of demonstrate that for you, okay? But that's why those properties of exponents for the, the zero exponent and negative exponents are what they are. It's not that someone made them up. It's just when you follow that logical pattern, that's what follows. When we're doing these problems, um, I would... Um, so in these problems, what I would do is I would complete the following steps. The first thing that I would do is I would, and I'll try to color code this also, is I would start by getting rid of the parentheses. And when you get rid of the parentheses, what that means is that you're going to be using the power of a product and the power of a quotient rule, essentially, okay? So you're going to get rid of parentheses by applying the exponent when it's appropriate to the product and to the quotient, okay? The second thing we're going to do is we're going to then move negative exponents. We can move the negative exponents across the fraction bar um, and turn them positive. One rule is that we never want to leave negative exponents in our final answer, okay? The last thing we're going to do is just keep simplifying. So we can use the product of powers and the quotient of powers and the power of a power, all that, to keep simplifying that way as well, all right? So in example one, um, we have one to the fourth over three squared, all raised to the negative two. We'll notice that I have the power of a quotient. So what I'll do is I am allowed to apply that exponent to each of these. Simultaneously, we're using that power of a power. We know that if I'm raising one to the fourth to the negative second, that I would multiply those exponents together. So I would end up with one to the negative eighth. Similarly, in our denominator, we would have three squared raised to the negative two. So I would multiply those exponents together, and I would end up with 3 to the negative 4. So I've accomplished the first goal of getting rid of our parentheses. Next, we want to move our negative exponents, if we have any. And look, we sure do. So this 1 to the negative 8 in the numerator needs to move to the denominator, and it would turn into 1 to the positive 8. This 3 to the negative fourth in the denominator would need to move up to the numerator, and now it becomes 3 to the positive fourth. And now we've accomplished the second goal of moving negative exponents. Finally, we're going to simplify. Let's evaluate these powers. 3 to the fourth would be 81. 1 to the eighth would be 1. And then 81 over 1, we should simplify and just get 81. And that would be our answer. In example 2, um, when I see something like this, I notice that I just have a bunch of one thing. I have a bunch of multiplication. So what I would do in this one is just simplify. I'll show you the, doing all the steps as well. But I would just simplify this. Notice that I have the same base, which is W, and I'm multiplying powers. So if I use the product of powers, that means that I'm just going to add all of these exponents together. So 5 plus negative 8 is negative 3, plus 6 is 3, 
our answer would just be W cubed. Well, let's say you're not comfortable with that. Let's say you're like, you know what, Mrs. Mackey, I don't like that. I want to follow your rules. Okay, so get rid of parentheses. Well, no parentheses. Let's move negative exponent. So the W to the fifth is not a negative exponent, so that would stay. The W to the negative eighth would move to the denominator and become positive, and the W to the sixth would stay. So we could move the negative exponents and then keep simplifying. So I would add the exponents in the numerator, W to the 11th, and then I'd have over W to the eighth, and then I would use the uh, quotient of powers rule and keep the base of W and subtract the exponents to get three. And notice you get the same thing. So this is just an alternative way. You don't have to do it both ways, but um, if you can see that you can be a little more efficient by just simplifying, go ahead. But if you feel better doing all the steps consistently, that's okay too. You would still get that same answer of W to the third. In example three, we have C over D to the negative fourth raised to the negative second. So the first step is to get rid of parentheses. Because I have a quotient, I'm al allowed to apply that negative exponent, well, any exponent, um, to each of the uh, pieces, the numerator and denominator. So if I apply it to the numerator, c to the negative second just becomes c to the negative second. If I apply it to the denominator, d to the negative fourth raised to the negative second means that I would multiply those exponents and that would give me d to the positive eight. So I've gotten rid of my parentheses. The next thing that I would do is move any negative exponents. That c to the negative second will need to move to the denominator and become c to the positive 2. d to the 8th doesn't move. The 8 is a positive exponent, so we do not move it. So that means the d to the 8th is going to stay down here. So we've accomplished the goal of moving negative exponents. But notice there's nothing in the numerator. So let's just make sure that we in the simplification step, compensate for that. If we don't see anything in the numerator, we do put a placeholder there of a one. And so that would be my final answer for example three, one over c squared d to the eighth. In example four, step one would be to get rid of parentheses. Well, notice there aren't any. So I'll just move negative exponents. So the a to the negative third in the numerator moves across the fraction bar to the denominator. The b squared stays up top. And the a to the fifth stays on the bottom. So we only move negative exponents, okay? Because those should not be in our final answer, okay? We always write our final answer without negative exponents. Well, now we're able to simplify b squared, nothing we can really do there. And what about a to the third times a to the fifth? There, because we have the same base, we would keep the base and add the exponents to get a to the eighth. And then that would be my answer, b squared over a to the eighth. Someone might say, well, why didn't we add these exponents together? Well, the bases were different, okay? And again, we didn't subtract these exponents because the bases were different. So that's just a little bit um, about why we would do that. In example five, the first thing is to get rid of parentheses. Well, this time we don't have any powers, but what we can do is we can actually get rid of the parentheses by multiplying everything together. So I'm going to look at seven, and is there an, anything else that would combine with seven? Like there are no other like uh, scalar multipliers. So I'll just leave seven on its own. Next, I have the y squared. Is there anything that I would be able to combine with the y squared? 
ooh, I see this y to the negative fourth. So the y to the squared times y to the negative fourth means we can keep our base of y and then add the exponents, 2 plus negative 4. That makes negative 2. Now I have z to the fifth, and I also have the z to the negative 1. Do you guys see those have the same bases? So we would keep our base of z and then add the exponents. 5 plus negative 1 is 4. So we've gotten rid of the parentheses. That's good. So our next step is to move negative exponents. Well, I do have a negative exponent to move, so I'll make a fraction bar. And the 7 is, does not have a negative exponent, okay? The 7 is on its own there, so that 7 is going to stay in the numerator. The y to the negative 2 will move to the denominator and become a positive exponent. And the z to the 4th will stay as well because the exponent was positive. Next, we would look to see if there's anything else to do to simplify. And I notice that all my bases, like I only have one of each base, okay? That's one thing, you want one of each base. You don't want like two z's in the final answer or two y's in the final answer and no negative exponents. So we are all set, that's our final answer. How about example six? The first step would be to get rid of the um, parentheses. And there are other ways you could do this, but it's just if you're following these steps, we'll just do it that way to be consistent together. Notice that you have, a, we have a bunch, we have a product in the numerator and denominator, and then because we have a numerator and denominator, a quotient. So what we could do is we can use the power of a product and power of a quotient rule by applying this exponent to every factor that we see, okay? So every factor in the numerator and the denominator is going to get that exponent of three. So I would start by having a squared to the third. We would multiply the exponents to get a to the sixth. b to the negative one to the third means that I'd have b to the negative third. Now I move to my denominator. I would have 2 to the third power, then a to the third to the third power. Multiply exponents, I would get a to the ninth. b squared to the third power, we'd multiply exponents to get b to the sixth. So I got rid of my negative exponent, or got rid of my parentheses. So next, I would get rid of negative exponents, and I only have one. So the a to the six stays, and the b to the negative third is going to go down. Um, you could write it up front if you want. Um, I like to <laughs> keep my numbers up front, so I'm going to keep that two cubed up front. I also like my letters in alphabetical order. You know, I can get a little nitpicky. Um, it's not wrong if you don't have it that way, just telling you what I do. I'm going to leave my a to the ninth here, but that b to the negative third needs to come down and become a positive exponent for positive three, and then the b to the sixth would stay as well. So all I did was really move this negative exponent to the denominator, and you could have it up front if you want, but I'm just telling you a lot of times when kids put that up front, it's kind of disastrous. So I would always try to keep your numerical values up front. Um, we can now simplify. Um, and so notice that I have this a to the sixth up here. Do you notice that I have a to the sixth and a to the ninth? Let me try to do this, circle this. That I have a to the sixth and a to the ninth. It's true that I could subtract exponents. I could say six minus nine, but that would give me a to the negative third and then I'd have to move it. My trick to you is that when you subtract exponents, if you're using that um, quotient of powers, always take the bigger exponent minus the smaller exponent. So I'm gonna take the bigger exponent of nine minus the smaller exponent of six, but, so that would give me a cubed, put it where it was bigger. Was it bigger in the numerator or the denominator? 
it was bigger in the denominator, so I'll put the a cubed there, okay? The next thing I see is I see this two cubed. So this two cubed that I see, I can just evaluate that to become eight. And again, the uh, numerical scalar multiplier should go up in the beginning. And then finally, I have this b cubed and b to the sixth. Those are being multiplied together, which means that we would keep the base and add the exponents to get nine. And then notice that we're, we're done and we have a space up in the numerator. Don't forget to put a little one there and that would be your final answer. Example seven, we'll do something very similar. We'll apply this exponent to every single factor in the numerator and the denominator. Multiplying exponents, we would get x to the 12th, y to the negative 6, and then in the denominator, x to the 9th, y to the 18th. Okay. Next, you can move negative exponents. So the x to the 12th stays, this x to the 9th stays, the y to the 18th stays, but this y to the negative 6 needs to move to the denominator and just become y to the positive 6. Finally, I'll look and I want to, I don't want two bases with x in my final answer. So if I look at x to the 12th and x to the 9th, because of the quotient I can subtract, I get x cubed, but where would it end up? Do you think the x cubed would be in the numerator or denominator? Well, it's bigger up in the numerator, so I'll leave that as x cubed. Next, I have y to the 18th and y to the 6th. Those I'm multiplying with the same base, so I keep the base of y, and then add these two together to get 24. Again, now I just have one base involving x, one involving y, I'm all set. Now, when you see something with example eight, I know that they're not there right now, but this multiplication really means that I'm, there are parentheses around those. So my friendly suggestion to you is when you see something like with a multiplication symbol, put parentheses. And then we'll get rid of the parentheses, kind of like we did in example five. What we'll do is we'll multiply the whole numerator together. I always start with numbers. I see seven, so I'm gonna start with that like coefficient of seven. I see x times x cubed. You guys don't forget that that x is really like x to the first. So one plus three means that my new exponent would be four and then I have y to the negative one. In the denominator, I don't have any um, constant, or well, I don't have any number, scalar mul number multipliers, but I do have x squared, and then I have y to the first times y to the negative fourth. I'll keep the base of y, and then add these exponents. One plus negative four is negative three. Next step, I'm going to move negative exponents. So the seven and the x to the fourth and the x squared, those are all positive exponents, so those stay put. But y to the first is gonna move to the denominator. Well, y to the negative one will move to the denominator. Um, and as y to the first, y to the negative third moves up to the numerator as y to the positive third. Next, I would simplify. And I would probably assume there's going to be a fraction there. I'm going to deal with the 7 first. That'll stay up here. If I look at my x's, I would subtract these exponents to get x squared. It's bigger in the top, so I'll keep it in the top. Then I look at my y's. I look at my y's, and I can see that I would subtract to get y squared. It's bigger in the top. So I would have y squared here. Now it's true there's a one on the bottom, but again, when you have a birthday, you don't say I'm 16 over one today. 
you just say I'm 16. So I'm just going to make that fraction bar part of my happy cloud, and that's it. All right. So that is how you can use the properties of exponents. All right.